Welcome to Days of Pain and Victory. I'm Josh, and today we've got kind of a random day, but it's full of lots of good stuff. So, um, I don't know if you can see that back there, but uh, gonna be needing that today. Clyde's getting some new shoes, so that's exciting. And we're gonna go uh, give one of our subscribers a little bit of swag just to say thanks for hitting that 500 subscriber mark back in December. So I'm finally, uh, you know, making good on that. Um, so, and I, I think he's got some, something to show us. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that too. We're gonna head on over to Four Wheel Parts right now. Get some new shoes for Clyde. look great um, I'll show them to you in just a little bit but uh, that, that took a little longer than expected so I have to hurry over to where we are using the cherry picker to get something pretty cool so uh, see you in a bit <laughs> got it all right well that was an interesting interesting experience wasn't much room for that cherry picker, but uh, got a little something, something back there. Why don't you guys leave a comment below on what you think that's going in. So, probably seen glimpses of it in some of our videos, but uh, yeah, little Ford small block back there. All right, just about to Chris's, gonna give him some swag and uh, hopefully check out some of his projects. See you there. All right, here at Chris's shop, and uh, he's gonna tell us about a couple of his rigs he's brought home. Yep. So, what do we got here? This is my 1970 International Travelette. I bought this thing in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, from a guy that built it. Well, he built about 90% of what you see here I put a bed on it and did a few other small things, but I purchased it from him and um, basically flew out there, jump seat on, on an airplane and um, drove it from Kentucky to Los Angeles. Holy cow. <laughs> and, uh, and the guy asked me, you know, when, when I was there, he's like, do you, do you know much about, this is an old truck. Are you, are you crazy? Are you just gonna drive it? And I'm like, yeah, sure, what, what could go wrong? And um, the only thing that went wrong on the trip, I actually stopped and bought tools and some supplies. The only thing that went wrong was uh, in the desert of New Mexico, the oil pressure sender, the wire popped off. Oh, geez. So I was basically cruising down the highway, look down and see the oil gauge, the oil pressure gauge at, at zero, and um, pulled over to the side and was like listening to it, because you know, it's a diesel, it makes, all kinds of racket. You know, is it is it knocking? Is it horrible? Left it run. I didn't want to turn it off. And then saw the wire, put it back on, went inside, and boom, we had oil pressure. And nice. That was all I did. That oh, just there. Yeah. So it's a diesel. We're, we're going to talk this, about that. This basically is what he did. Was he put the Cummings uh, 6BT P pump Cummings in the truck? Put Chevy axles. It's a corporate 14 in the back and a 10 in the front. Okay. And it's, of course, it's got the Dodge transmission. And he did all kinds of uh, neat stuff to it, but he, he was unable to finish it. And I've been unable to finish it too, because I've been, you know, other <laughs> projects kind of suck you into it. Yeah. You know, they get you all sucked in and this thing runs and drives and it runs and drives so good that why take it apart? But I'm yeah. kind of at the point now where I'm thinking about taking it apart. Interior, the, um, the original seat is in my storage. That's a seat out of a 60s Dodge from the junkyard that was $40, so I bought it and stuck it in there. And you can see it needs some TLC. Sure, but it's complete. It, yeah, it needs a little bit of love. So cool, it's a crew cab. It's got corrosion here. I got it. You see what I did to this thing. Um, I don't think I'll be able to find a roof for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm gonna have to. Uh, that's got that, uh, that's that flex seal. 
Oh, okay. Because it was, I was worried it was going to leak. It's one of those as seen on TVs. Yeah, so the one problem that I had with this truck, that trip I was telling you about that I drove it to Vegas from California, from Los Angeles, um, on the way back from that trip, when the guy built it, he uh, used the gasoline fuel tank. Okay. And it's got a little sock on the pickup. You've seen those when you pull it out, there's like a yeah. little sock. So they put wax in some diesel. I don't know if they do it on purpose or if it's accidental. So on the way back, that sock that was on the thing got uh, clogged with oh. wax. So I chased that problem, ended up buying a new pump. And of course, I can't just go buy any regular high pressure pump. You know, I got to get the modified one oh, yeah. that's high performance because that's just how I roll. I buy this pump and uh, put it on there. And now the pump is, it's, it's interesting. It's like a little gun sight. You know, it's got a little, uh, I have to look at it to, to remember. It's got a little cover that comes off. And this gun sight comes down and lines up just like, a, you know, you line the front pin up with the back one. Okay, yeah. And so this, the front pin comes around and you line it up here. And that's supposedly where the pump is supposed to be timed to the motor at top dead center for your number one cylinder. Okay. Right? So now what I didn't know, that's all stock stuff. What I didn't know is once you get into these aftermarket high performance pumps, which it's not really an aftermarket billet pump, it looks exactly like the stock pump because uh -huh. it is a stock pump. They just take and change the pistons because this little thing's got pistons in it that move up and down and turn. Okay. Right. And that's just the fuel curve, right? So that pin, that little gun sight thing is supposed to be timed at the engine top dead center stock. But now on the aftermarket pumps, nobody does it stock, right? Uh -huh. That gun sight was supposed to be timed. That's where the pump worked best at whatever advance you want on your crankshaft. Okay. Right? So basically what I was doing would be the same as taking and stabbing a distributor in a gas car at top dead center. You, you've lined your, your uh, rotor up to number one yeah. cylinder at top dead center and trying to run the car. Without like... Without any adjustment afterwards. Yeah. Right? So that's what I was doing. The truck didn't run right. And uh, you know, so I tried to adjust it and led to all kinds of drama trying to get it to run. So I call the people up at the place I bought the pump and they're like, no, no, that's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. So I was working on it and it just wouldn't run right. It was running horrible. So then the guy, I call back and talk to the guy and I'm like, no, there's something wrong with this pump. I'm going to take it off and send it back to you. And the guy's like, before you do that, call, you got to call the guy who built it. Because I guess they've got a guy in some basement somewhere that they just feed once in a while. You know, he's like that guy. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he, I call him and he says, no, no, you have to advance the crank where you want it. Oh. And then time the pump to that at the gun sight. So I, what I ended up doing, because I couldn't, there's no degree mark on this thing, right? Oh, shoot. To find top dead center, I had to, there's a pin in the back. I couldn't get it to work right. So I pulled that number one valve cover off and you drop the exhaust valve down and basically make a stop. Uh -huh. So the exhaust valve, you tighten it down to where the piston comes up and kisses it. Okay. You make a mark, then you lift it, run it back the other way, you run it back the other way and make another mark. Okay. So you basically found the... Oh, so you're the in between center. that. Yeah, in the dead center. Yeah. It's like a piston stop. Yeah. 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 So I did that and then bought a gauge to plug into the number one piston on the pump and then that gauge basically uh told me the lift of that pump and where it was at and what advance i wanted it at oh it was it was a mess <laughs> but when i got it man it was it was it was a night and day difference nice very cool it was a night and day difference because the wax had melted it gets better <laughs> the wax had melted just enough to get off of that sock right so i drove it for two days like that and then I was driving it again, and you know, it, you know, with all this new power, what do you do? You use, you use it, right? it yeah. yeah. So I was using it, and all of a sudden, I, at the very top end, it went bup, 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 just like it did before. I'm like, wow, that's really weird. So then I investigated further, pulled that tank out, and found the sock with the... When he installed the motor, it's further forward than the factory Dodge. Okay. Because you see the intercooler yeah, it's is sticking up. way out. So one of the dilemmas I've been having with doing this truck is should I pull the body off the frame and slide the motor back and it cut? Looks like there's room. Oh, I would cut and move, I would move it back to where I can get this radiator 
on this side. Okay. So it needs to go, my guess would be six to eight inches. Yeah. Back, in which case I would just cut the firewall and move it back. And then from factory, is there some sort of valance? Yeah, the, yeah, there's a valance, there's like a little, exactly, a little valance panel that goes there. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet, you know, it's one of those things to where if you move this back, you've got drive shafts, you've got- Yeah, everything. You know, everything. Both, yeah, front and rear drive oh, shafts. Oh yeah, front and rear drive shafts. Uh, all the mounts. Transmission mount, uh, all kinds of stuff. But they make everything for that motor to go in anything. Yeah. Which is cool. Pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen a Crew Cab International in person. You know, they're out there. They're out there. There's a few, you, if you're looking for them, you can find them. Yeah. But you really gotta look, just like anything else, you know? That's cool. This is where the fuel is? Yes. Wow. So this thing's made with two tanks. It's got one on this side and one on the other side. Um, you see I put got diesel over there? Yeah. There? Yeah, just so that nobody puts gas in it. Um, it's only running off one tank and it's for the trip from Kentucky. Yeah. That one tank holds 11.5 uh, gallons. You making a lot of stops. <laughs> well, it, 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 eleven point five gallons. With that first pump, it did a solid twenty miles a gallon. So I could do, I could comfortably do about one hundred ninety, two hundred miles. But um, you know, that's, that's yeah a lot of stops. Yeah, that equates to a lot of stops. Holy cow! So one of my plans is to put a, two bigger tanks in it because the tanks were the same tanks for the single cab as they were the double cab. Okay. And it's basically underneath the seat. So I think if I fab up the tank, I'll be able to fab it long enough to go. I wonder if it would be better to put the tanks further back to balance out the weight. You know what? You're you're one hundred percent right, but I kind of because this motor is so heavy. I don't want to get away from the factory look of yeah. those. But you know what? How many people would look at that and know? Hey, how come those aren't there? Sure. You know. Cool. All it's right. been a great truck. The only thing about it, like you said, it's so light in the back. Off roading in it. Uh, it has to be on four wheel drive. You're not driving it anywhere off road <laughs> and two wheel drive because it just the Can't back tires. Yeah, it. and the motor moving just that eight inches or ten inches makes a huge difference. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Good hauler. Yeah, it is. It is a good hauler. I've loaded it up. I've got a picture of it loaded with uh, gravel. The bed loaded with gravel. Yeah. Um, a trailer full of sand. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No problems. No, no problems. I upgraded the front brakes, of course. They were the regular stock Chevy brakes. I put the bigger, they, that's one good thing about the Chevy stuff is the, um, the brakes are literally to go from the pickup truck to the 6,000 pound capacity dump truck. Yeah. It's the same brake caliber. Well, it's a different brake caliber, but it's the same mounting. Okay. So you can mount it to it, mount it right to the axle. Nice. All right, well that was fun checking out the old uh, International. Um, got Chris a t-shirt, some stickers, and a gift card to Four Wheel Parts. So thanks again, Chris, for you know just supporting the channel. It's pretty awesome. Just heading back to the house. Uh, got to pull this cherry picker out of here. Um, I, yeah. And these, uh, these Falcons ride so nice. Um, partly that might be because uh, my old tires were so shot, but gosh, it just rides smooth. They're not noisy. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how they do in the snow and mud and uh, how long they last and whatnot. So. Anyway, when I get back to the house, I'll uh, give you a little closer look at these tires. They're pretty nice. Not home yet. I failed to mention, Chris does have a YouTube channel. He's got a few videos on there. So if you want to check out some of his projects, I will link his channel in the description below. He's got a number of pretty cool cars. So you might want to go check those out, uh, especially the the videos on his green Jeep Cherokee. I think it's sweet. Uh, he took that thing out wheeling with us at North Island Mud Crawl a couple years ago, and it's a rad little Jeep. So, um, 
yeah, I will link his channel down in the description below. Go check out his cars. They're pretty awesome. All right, made it back. If he is back, called it a small block earlier. I don't know these Fords very well. So anyway, Effie made it. And here are those Falcon Wild Peak All Trains. They look pretty good. Ride really nice. So um, I'll be doing a more in-depth review on these tires um, maybe in the next month or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. And then leave a comment below. Where do you think this FE is going? What project is it going into? Um, little hint, it is not staying here, so, but you will see it. All right, that is it for this episode. Wheel it, wreck it, wrench it, repeat. We'll see you next time.